All right, so heat pumps. We absorb heat from outside, reject heat inside, right? Absorb heat from outside, reject heat inside. In the summertime, the reverse valve goes the other way. I absorb heat from inside the house, reject heat outside the house. So what we do is, let's talk about an electric unit. I have that electric unit. It has the metering device, either a TXV or fixed orifice, already there. And then I can, on the outside unit, separately buy a plain set straight AC condenser and install to it. Or I can install a heat pump that's got the reversing valve and those other components in there. And it doesn't matter which one I pipe with it, it's still the same inside unit. So we can install a unit with a model number and serial number for a heat pump that has all this built in. Or I can install just a straight AC, straight cooling system on it. Does that make sense? Yes. Because it's still just, say, a 3 quarter inch copper pipe and a 3 8 copper pipe. You run the pipes and outside you can install a heat pump or you can install a straight AC unit. Okay? Did I lose anybody there? No. No, not yet? All right, so we just simply absorb heat from inside, reject heat outside in the... Absorb heat from inside, reject heat outside in the uh, summer. summer. In the winter, absorb heat from outside and reject heat inside. So this is what's important. In the summertime, what is this called? What's this called? In the wintertime, what's this called? What's this called? See how it gets confusing? So in a heat pump, we call it the indoor coil and the outdoor coil. The inside coil and the outside coil. Simplifies things. There's a lot of people that still call this the condenser. I'm like, eh, condenser means it's straight AC, right? It's outside a condenser. The heat pump, the outdoor, the outdoor unit. Because the heat pump, this coil is sometimes the condenser and sometimes the evaporator, so we call it simply the outdoor unit or the outdoor coil. And over here, this in the summertime is a, in the wintertime it's a, so we just call it the indoor unit. Sound good? Is that great? Just one in the vending machine. So far so good? That's a heat pump. Now, people make heat pumps way more complicated than there are. Sometimes people go to a unit and they don't know what's wrong with the unit. And they look at that reversing valve and they don't know how the reversing valve works. And they're like, well, I don't know the problem. I don't know what this does. That has to be the problem. The two things match up, right? Notoriously, people want to replace the reversing valve when the reversing valve has nothing wrong with it. Alex, there's nothing wrong with the reversing valve. Why do you want to replace it? Why? Why do you want to replace the reversing valve? What does it do? Yeah, Alex. Just because you get that freakish thing yeah, out. Alex. It's very simple. It simply sends the hot gas inside, or it will send the hot gas outside. outside. That's all it does. It reverses the flow of refrigerante. That's all it does. It sends the hot gas inside, or it sends the hot gas outside. In the summertime, where does it send the hot gas? Outside. In the wintertime, where does it send the hot gas? Outside. That's exactly right. That is a heat pump right there. I need a pressure difference to make this valve move. If the compressor is not running, will that valve move? No, no, no. Absolutely not. How can you know where that valve is inside? Inside that unit? Right, so let me just do a little. Now, which way is the valve? Is it over this way? Or is it over this way? You can't tell people pressure. Well, this valve is all brass except for the metal piece on the sides. It's far this way. And on this side, it's not sticking on the end. So I know my valve is this way. It's connecting these two pipes. Hmm. Is that an is that an A A C H A S C part? What's that? Is that an A H V A C part? 
magnet. magnet. It's just a magnet. <laughs> it's a neodymium magnet. Are you sure it's not like HVAC certified magnet? Yeah, he needs to put an HVAC. So I moved it over the other way. Now it's sticking over here on this side. Not over here, but it sticks there. So I know that it's over this way. Is, uh, Can I so try? It's connected to the hot gas line. So wouldn't that be super hot, or it's not that part in particular? Yeah, whichever, let's say it's connected here. Yeah. This pipe and this pipe is going to be super hot. So watch your this will be cool. And then if it reverses, these two pipes are going to be hot. These two will be cool. Let me see if you try them on magnet. It's all that coming. You want to that again? Because you want to see the magnet. Very little. But you can still feel it. Yeah, I can feel it pulling. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hell of a magnet. I want to go magnet fishing. You see magnet fishing? You buy those big magnets, you throw them on like rivers. People are pulling guns, knives, metal, things from like. Depends where you go. So what you'll have happen is. Sometimes these will hang up, and this valve doesn't move all the way to one side or the other. How can you check to see if that's working or not? We can see where it's, but you can't see if it's all the way shifted one way or another. How can I check to see if a liquid line filter dryer is clogged up? Temperature. temperature. The temperature on one side and the temperature on the other. It's called a delta T, right? Temperature in, temperature out. So there shouldn't be a temperature difference, right? Now on a, uh, this reversing valve, we pretty much have the same thing going. If I check the temperature here, I should be very, very close to the temperature coming out. And on the suction, these two temperatures should be pretty close to the same, and these two are going to be pretty close to the same. Now there's going to be a little bit of a variance because there's only a little piece of metal there. So you will have some heat loss and gain on each side, but for the most part, they should be pretty close. Let's say 5, 10 degrees of each other. You get above that, you know that your heat pump is, is leaking. In other words, that little plate where it's holding it down is either maybe somebody overheated it and it's bubbled up and the high pressure is bleeding into the low pressure, or maybe the slide isn't moved all the way and it's not sealing and high pressure is bleeding into low pressure. So you can use your thermometer and check it. How cool is that? Isn't that neat? How simple that is. Isn't it simple? It's crazy, crazy simple. Crazy simple. Now, the most difficult part to replace in an HVAC unit is the reversing valve. Because who has a reversing valve? Who has it? Who has oh, it? Oh, oh, who yeah, has there you go. Hold that up. Now, look how close all three of those pipes are together. They're very close together. Brazing on those is very difficult because even the new ones are a lot smaller, a lot more compact. So brazing on those are difficult because you have to heat all three of these pipes up at the same time to get them to pull loose. Sometimes you can pull one and then the others out, but it's difficult because you've got to braze all these together and get your torch moving without overheating all this. So you have to put what you call heat absorbing paste on this and rags on this to keep the heat from damaging this while you braze all three of these together at the very same time. Can we try that? No, that's crazy. No. Can we try that? You will have to have good brazing skills before you try to do a heat pump reversing valve because Overheating it will cause massive, massive amounts of damage. That's a lot of damage. Right? Pretty neat, huh? Are we talking about non HVAC stuff? Fight for the job? I fight for Canada and only for Canada. Canada, right? Well, how about sorry? Sorry, I paid you. All right, questions? It's pretty simple. It is, it's very simple, right? It's very simple. The big thing is that people just don't understand what that part is and they try to guess on it and assume that that's the problem, but it's, it's rarely the problem. 
you just simply measure the temperature on those lines and you can tell if it's leaking or not, if you think it's what it is. And then, oh, what mode is it in? Well, hmm, here's a good way. How about this gas line? It's in it's summertime, you touch that gas line. Ow, it burned me. What mode is it in? It's in heat pump mode, if it burned you. I touch the, the gas line. Oh, it feels cool. What mode is it in? It's in AC mode. No, So this line in the summertime is going to be what? Should be what? No. Cool. Low temperature, low pressure superheated vapor. When you touch, it's going to feel cool. When I touch this line in the in the summer in the winter time, what's it going to feel like? Hot. Hot. It's going to be a high temperature, high pressure superheated vapor. Now this line is going to be liquid either way, so it won't matter. But this line will be the line that determines what it is. This is the line that connects the inside and the outside. This is the line that connects the inside and the outside. Except the liquid line is going to be smaller. All the molecules are very close together in a liquid. This one's going to be a larger pipe because the molecules are in vapor. They need more space. All right? So far, so good. Now, you're going to hook the gauges up on the unit. Where do I hook my liquid line? On the liquid line. Fantastic. The same place we always have. Now, where am I going to put the blue hose? So can I put them where we've been putting them? Right here? Well, here it's what? But now it's what? Now what gauge is it that we use on that suction side? On that low, low pressure gauge. What pressure is it going to be in the winter time? So what's going to happen to your gauge when you hook this gauge to that same port? In the, it's going to blow up. It's going to blow up. Do you want your gauges to blow up? No. No. So you just have to move. What's the if Angus doesn't want his gauge to blow up, then the rest of you guys are probably going to want your gauge to blow up again. <laughs> I got the special Canadian. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's right. So it's very, very important that we put the blue gauge in the correct spot. So where are you going to hook your blue gauge, Erwin? There is going to be another, another, another. This one is the true suction port. True suction is the place to be for your blue low pressure gauge. Da 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 da. <laughs> There's going to be a third port. That third port is for your true suction. True suction. True suction. It's your true suction because it's always suction no matter what. It's always going to be suction. No matter what mode it's in, it's going to be suction. So where are you, Reese, going to put your gauge? Your blue gauge. True suction because true suction is the place to be for that low pressure gauge. Don't you see? On the third line for my... What happens if you hook your suction gauge on and it's in heating mode? It will blow your gauge, or could very well blow your gauge. So there was this young service technician, and he was out going to a job that was about 60 or 70 miles from the city into a church. Uh, and when he gets there, the guy hooks his gauges up where he always hooks them up. Blue on the suction, red on the liquid side. He goes inside to turn it to call for cooling. The lady starts talking to him and blah, 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 blah. By the time he goes outside, his gauge, his blue gauge is blown. What happened? It was calling for cooling. It should have been in cooling mode, but there was an electrical problem. And it wasn't in cooling mode. It was in heating mode, and it was summertime. So it was really, really hot outside, it's absorbing a lot of heat, and it was really hot inside, so there was a lot of heat, so the pressures were extremely high anyways. So here, that high pressure discharge blew that suction gauge. So that guy was a young technician of field, so he only had one set of gauges at the time. So don't be like me. <laughs> Put your gauge on the true suction side always, no matter what mode you're in, and you will never have that problem. All the heat pumps have a true suction line port. All the units. 
Okay. Does some of them uh, cap it off, right? Like if they're not going to use it for a heat pump? Let's go out to the lab. Let's identify our third port, our true suction.